Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final hour of the Wicked Thimble set in the Feast or Famine universe. Our siblings are uh, attempting to get their fourth and final ingredient necessary in order to make what they believe to be the most wonderful cloak that will for sure win the fashion show. Um, unfortunately, this is a, a dragon scale. They've realized they literally only need one, just one giant dragon scale. Um, but it belongs to the scale that they want belongs to a uh, dragon that Hugo has had some dorama with. So Hugo sacrificing yourself. Maybe you don't even realize it. Sacrificing yourself for, uh, for the good of your family being able to get this dragon scale that they're vying after. You've presented yourself to the dragon along with a peacock that um, just has a lot of sass and needs to get it out somewhere. So you've uh, you've you've uh, created a distraction, yeah. You are you are there presenting yourself, calling yeah. out to the dragon, and he now sees you. Um, the rest of you, the other the other three of you, including um, your new friend, uh, the four of you are going to attempt to get a dragon scale while he's distracted. Yes, under the under the assumption that. You are so small that you should be able to take one scale and have it feel basically like a bee sting. Um, so how, what is, what is your plan there? Are you just trying to like sneak up behind it? Are you going for the tail? Like what would you guys like to do? I say we all, oh wait, this would be a character. So Nox is just gonna explain that <laughs> we all at once just kind of flank him. Like there's, there's three of us Well, Hugo distracts him. So that is the, she'll explain that as her plan. Flank him, flank him how? Like flank the Two same. Two on the side, one in the back, and then Hugo in the front. So one on each side, one in the back, Hugo in the front. Okay, so you want, you think that, that everybody should be trying to take a scale from a different spot and one yes. of you will definitely be victorious. Yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> I see. Or, and one of us might be dead, but you know what? <laughs> but hey. But hey, break a few eggs for a good for a good cloak. Exactly. Um, uh, Should and uh, Briannica, how do you guys feel about this plan? Briannica doesn't care what the plan is as long as she gets to stay <laughs> with their new friend. Okay. Um, I'm I'm hesitant about this plan, only because I think that if the scales are so large, it's going to take more than one of us to rip this this scale off. I would you like to would you like to take a second and sort of um, observe the dragon and get a better idea of the yeah. size of his scales? Yeah, that's smart. Um, for that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, just just make a, a basic roll. Don't add anything to it. Um, 2d6. Oh no, there's no Okay, they, uh, it's, it's dark in there. It's pretty dark in there. You're not quite sure. You see, you see the, the glinting of multiple scales, right? Like it's obvious you're looking at the dragon, but you okay. have no idea how big those scales are. Like how, how embedded they are? Yeah, you, you don't know. You don't know, uh, what direction they're going. You don't know how big they are. Um, it's really, really hard for you to tell if it's going to take more than one of you to, to like, do this okay so you're you're going into this blind you're operating what blind we, here what if we did this what if Knox, you and i take one side and Briannica and our new friend take the other side because the tail is going to be flipping around so it's two and two so that we can both try to like pull and then they can try to pull and then if we both get them great if one gets it as soon as it's out we hightail it okay so you want to go for you want to have um two people on one leg and two people on the other leg like back legs is that the idea yeah yeah okay um yeah it... and Knox will agree to that and just be like yeah i figure that if we're not strong enough then at least there's two of us so that's mm -hmm. smart yeah good job sis <laughs> <laughs> all right Cool. So that is the plan. Um, Hugo, how are you? How are you distracting this dragon? How are you keeping his attention? Um, we're gonna fight. 
Great. So no, no, like flowery declarations or anything. You don't, no. you don't. Like thunder cracks in the air, and like metal music starts playing. Sure. And like Hugo's there with scissors, and then the dragon like starts to inch out the shadows, and you realize that like this isn't like a a one sided like like nemesis hatred. Like you see the dragon's claws come out the shadow, and like fuck Hugo is like tattooed on his claws. <laughs> <laughs> and the same tattoo of like a dragon and a man fighting is like on the dragon's chest oh and like he's he's out for blood yeah man they go they yeah. go fight he reaches up and he takes off his shades oh. Oh. and he uh he doesn't he... take them off he fucking crushes them <laughs> yeah. in his hand yeah the his when his eyes were like glowing red through them, it it seemed much more intense than it actually was because of the magnification of these these giant sunglasses, but he he reaches up with one claw and takes them off and just crushes them and then goes to swipe at you. Um, how would you like to defend yourself? Uh, I He just goes to like block the, the claws with his scissors. Okay. Um, yeah. Make a roll plus your strength modifier. Okay, great. Yeah, this is this is the epic battle that always happens with you two. He just he goes to swipe you. He tries to literally rip you in half with his giant claws and you just psh, there's sparks and it's oh, it's so epic. It looks incredible. And as um, you guys nobody blocking, else is paying attention, but <laughs> he looks down at the peacock and he says, "Go now." Implying that the peacock should attack him. Right. In his eyes. <laughs> um cool would the do you think that the peacock would attack or would he just enjoy the show he is a fucking peacock, bitch peacock is, is for as uh self-involved and stubborn uh as the peacock is it it definitely does take direction um but more so because there's so much ruckus going on it's just pissed off that right. like all this ruckus is happening and so it is a it it does have uh, ferocity plus two so it's it's not a nice peacock so it would right. definitely abide by that uh request great do you want to make a roll for it sure 2d6 mm -hmm. oh shit Ooh, oh, this, god this <laughs> fight was already epic and then it's made even more <laughs> epic <laughs> I think it would come from the peacock, but hot damn, that peacock goes from zero to 100 real fast. Yes. Um, and it just, it attacks the dragon's claw. Um, and oh, and it definitely... Eyes, didn't he? Sam, didn't you tell him to go for the eyes? No, I just said go now. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, the the claws, I think the, the, the hand, really, of this dragon is the only thing that that the peacock would be able to reach as of right now. Um, but uh, it it goes right for the fleshy bits. It goes right right for in here and does a little bit of damage. Um, how do you, what's what's the role for damage on this peacock? Um, it, I don't think it, it doesn't say, it just says choose a base and it says ferocity plus two, cunning plus two, instinct plus one and zero armor. Hmm, okay. Um, Trying to think of what would be a fair roll for that if we're just kind of rolling with it. Um, let's do a uh, roll a d10. One d10. Yep. Okay. Seven. He he yeah he he stabs into the into the dragon's palm and dragon is pissed it makes an ear piercing sound um okay so uh the other four of us uh we're gonna we're gonna use this opportunity that we've been granted this incredibly epic fight that we are not paying attention to at all to get into position and try to take a scale yes yes cool all right Best so yeah, I'm going to say, like, with these roles, we everybody gets into position really easily. Um, would you like to try and time it out? Like, should everybody be pulling at the same time? Or do you want to just, like... What is our friend doing? 
uh, I am with you. She's with you. Uh, but, what is, but what is her plan? Because that's what I'm going to do, too. Is she going <laughs> to... She, she's going along with the plan that that was created with the group. So right, she plans but which part on... part of the dragon is she going to be on? Because that's the part I want to be on. Right, yeah. You, you and your okay. French friend are on one leg. And then uh, Shod and Knox are on the other leg. Okay. Right. And, you can go um, with your French friend. <laughs> and the, the plan is to grab a scale with four hands, right? With, with both people grabbing and just, like, rip it out. Yeah? Yeah. What yeah. do you want to do? On three. I'm also, I'm also going to summon my unseen servant again. And he's just going to be like, uh, fine. And help us. <laughs> to try and help out? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Would you guys like to just like try to do this as fast as possible? Just get in there and do a one, two, three and tug. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, let's have, let's have, um, yeah, both of, both of you roll and we'll see how you do. Um, both of you roll 2d6. With our strength modifiers, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> great and we both did real bad um yeah so you both equally maybe you were a little bit misguided like you thought <laughs> that maybe you didn't need to put your full effort into this because like there's b the both of you there's your unseen servant like you guys were like we basically have three people tugging at this thing right and neither of you really wanted to put in all of the work <laughs> <laughs> find nine though <laughs> but I mean, sure. Sure. I'd like I'd like to try because my friend is in front of me and I want to impress the hell out of her. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I will I will roll as her and um you roll as yourself. She she's um she's pretty big, but she's not necessarily strong. So I'm just gonna do it with um no modifier. So I got a ten. She's trying really hard. She wants to get oh. off this. Hell yeah. Okay, so by the power of, I don't know, love, lust, who who even really knows? Love. She's um, French. She's French. Lust. And in the fashion world, that's all you need for me to fall in love with you. <laughs> Facts. That's true. All right. So while well, we've got uh, these three on the other side, just kind of like maybe even like bickering a little bit, not quite able to get this scale out, um, you and your your beautiful French friend, you you make a connection, man. You make a connection, and you just oh, we we don't even look at the dragon scale. We stare into each other's eyes as we yeah. grunt and pull. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you you manage to pull the scale out, and when it when it hits the ground, it makes a pretty loud noise. Um, I think that the people that are on the other side, on the other leg, you would you would glance over and see whether or not they got it done. So um. Yeah, you guys have we just a scale. Look, we just look under the dragon and see them succeeding, and I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> I'm never like, going to live this down. But we only have <laughs> That's like, what do you care about? so deeply into like, the, the French woman's eyes that the scale is just slowly sliding under the dragon because they're still like locked into this, like, oh, yeah. Right, they've like let go of the scale. Yeah. Uh, it's not about the scale anymore. They, they're like on the it scale and just took each other's hand, and the scale yeah. is like... <laughs> Just like so, tumbling away. Yeah. So yeah. Unfortunately, you have and like grab this scale and yell over to the two of them like, "Hey, we got it! Like, let's go! Let's go!" Yeah, you, you're gonna need help. The scale is heavy. Um, like that almost is probably what helped them get this scale off of the dragon is the fact that gravity was at play. Like, this is a pretty this is a pretty heavy scale. So, so you're gonna you're gonna need like the whole team pulling at this at least until the mountain slopes back down. Uh, so right? I think I think what I wanna what I would do is uh, when when she realizes it's too big to too big to pick up, uh, run over to Brianica and the French woman and kind of like. If, if it's big enough for, for that to happen, it's big enough for them to sit on. So, like, sit them on the on the scale and just push them down the mountain. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go. Um, we're gonna use the, you're going to use the scale as a sled? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Same. I love that idea so much, I'm not even going to make you roll for it. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. They're, they're down. They're down to have their solo ride down the mountain. Um, 
in in a little dragon scale. Okay, so uh, well, <laughs> Briannica and her new fa- friend are uh, going down the mountain. The other four of you, including the peacock, um, are still up there. Do you do you just book it? What's oh yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I'm gonna stay back and help Hugo. Okay. I, I yell at him to book it. <laughs> Hugo, do you stop fighting to book it? Hugo's Hugo's like fighting, and he's like, "This isn't right." He just yells that to to Knox. What isn't right? What what's not right? I've never made it this far before. Uh. And, and as he as he says it, the dragon's other hand punches him off the side of the mountain. Oh no! <laughs> All right, uh, let's. Uh... Why you go? Why you go? Why? Yeah. So he um sure he he like punches you straight through one of the holes. Like there are holes everywhere, right? So. Um, he just, he gives you one big old swing. You fly through one of the holes. Um, make a, make a roll. Roll 2d6, um, plus your constitution. What's your constitution? One. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you didn't land on the spikes, thank God. Um, uh-huh. you didn't land on, like, the spiky bits of the mountain. Um, you actually, like, you managed to sort of, like tap and roll the whole time like it's not just a, a straight into the air and then drop because you would die but yeah. um the last thing knocks to... his oh. is oh. hugo just going i'll be back <laughs> i'll send my unseen servant after him okay so cool. i'll just be like uh, go pick up his guts <laughs> yeah, yeah that'll that'll help him out as well maybe that makes his his uh consistent landings a little bit softer but you managed to make it um like three quarters of the way down the mountain just on like slam and rolling <laughs> all the way down um mm, mm. the dragons and wyverns do not bother you they're, they're just like, what? again again sort of cat like just like hmm. you just kind of watch <laughs> it's just kind of fun to watch uh it doesn't happen every day i like i like so. the idea that like Jesse is riding on the dragon scale and they're like looking at each other's eyes and in the background you see me actually like overtake them. (laughs) But they don't even they don't even notice me. Don't even notice. Just like like staring at each other. Perfect. All right. Uh Knox and Showed. You're gonna book it? You're running? I've already started booking it. (laughs) Yeah. And hit the ice patch and slide down that all like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um Yeah, you guys have have ran all the way down, you hit the ice patch, you kind of slip and slide, but you manage to get down even faster. Slide and on my uh, witch hat. Ev- eventually, eventually, all of you are, for better or for worse, um, at the bottom of the mountain. It's time to make our cape. Yeah, you've done it. You got. I don't all know where Hugo you- is, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> well. Hugo's, I, I... Hugo had a rough way of it about three quarters of the way down. Um, and then he sort of like hobbles his way down the rest, but he's able to he's able to meet up with you. Oh, he's good. just the last one to get there. Mm. My unseen servant will fist bump him. Yeah. <laughs> I, got you. He's got one arm around the unseen servant, and they're like talking. <laughs> they're talking about like their favorite types of food. No oh, good, <laughs> good. Um, yeah. So you've done it. You've grabbed all of the stuff that you need. To make what you believe is uh, the the best cloak, the best cloak that will absolutely win the fashion show. So I think at this point we we sort of like smash cut to almost a montage, right, of um, all of you guys sort of coming together with your ideas to create this cloak. What does it look like? What does this cloak look like once you're all done? I mean, I feel like, like in, which in piece typical, is used for what? In typical fashion show nature, like it looks fucking awful <laughs> like you know how that runway shit just looks ridiculous sure it's the most ridiculous looking cloak anyone's ever seen 
like I think it should be structural but also flowy and mm. also have some elements of uh, accoutrement and it's just like a giant like scale just sticking out of one shoulder <laughs> Just yeah. like, you guys weren't able to figure out how to cut it down, yeah. so it's just like so it's just one like, giant <laughs> scale. <laughs> shoulder piece, you know, it protects yeah. the side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You you guys, uh, you had a lot of trouble finding a model who could actually walk down the runway in this. <laughs> um, not only does it have just a gigantic dragon scale that comes out of one shoulder, it also has um, fur that every now and then sort of like <laughs> the person but it's beautiful. Um, it also has like kind of this weird sort of scratchy fabric that makes people feel really itchy and strange that uh, in, pretty much only Knox realizes is because it's fucking poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> but it has fairy magic in it. It has, ma it yeah, it it has magic. magic. It has That's, magic. The fairy magic it's gives it the, the weightlessness. And it turns out we could Turns out we couldn't find any room for the Grumpus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we so, never used it. Yeah, we never used it. It just sat there. It was weird. I was I was thinking it'd just be the hood, so you just like put it on top. But, and there's, but, like, there's a morbid like the smile. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like the Grumpus's hairstyle. <laughs> it's just the Grumpus's like, head. Yeah, it's just like right on top. Yeah. Oh gosh. So, um, yeah, you guys, you guys go to this incredible sort of overblown, um, fashion show with your mother and she is so proud of you. Oh my gosh. It's sure to win. It's sure to win because my babies work together and they're all so talented. Aren't you? You're all just so talented. Mama's little babies. Yes. <laughs> it probably would have been better if we set the cloak on fire, but sure. <laughs> um, I feel at this at this fashion show, like on my shoulder is the the pixie prince, <laughs> Slav or whatever his name is, um, mm -hmm. and he's got his little miniature version on as well. Like he's right. wearing like his little tiny miniature version, like front and center of this fashion show because he's in it, right? <laughs> He's into uh, it. Well, the, the Pixie Prince was about the size of you guys. Um, but if you would like to have invited him, he would. I want him to be come. regular human size, but he sat on your shoulders so he can see the <laughs> fashion show better. <laughs> yeah. 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 He refuses to sit on an actual chair because that's very beneath him. He sits on uh, people. The French yeah. lady is sitting on Brianica's lap and they are just making out. They have Great. not stopped <laughs> since they got back. What's not that? stopped. Yeah. Who she is? What her name is, what her thing was, Brianna <laughs> didn't care. Nobody cared. Mm -mm. They just made out the entire time. Yeah. Um, your and mother I, was delighted, I, delighted I, to know that you found somebody. I found Anybody. someone. It's not about her past. <laughs> it's not about, yeah. It's Anybody. not about who she was. It's about our future together. We just make out the entire time. In fact, yeah. I didn't really help mm -hmm. at all with the creation of no, the cloak. You didn't, you didn't, no. We were just in the room. In the, we, we went down to Bone Town. Minus the bones, straight to, I guess, make out point. Which your your siblings were very delighted about because uh, that way they could keep up their lie that they never killed the Grumpus. Right. Who, no, they no, never even found a Grumpus. Grumpus. What Grumpus? Never, yeah, not, I didn't not know. supposed to see, like, two Grumpus parents, like, talking to the cops at one corner <laughs> of the fashion of the <laughs> show. <laughs> Grumpus police. Thank Grumpus God you did. Police officers talking to Grumpus parents. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, uh, when was the last time? <laughs> It'd be like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby. Oh, I Bobby, my son's missing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a British cop. It's not. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this building, this building is um, beautiful. Uh, it has just like long tapestries all over the place with really elaborate stitch work. Um, it's, it feels, um, it feels like all of the colors are very warm, but it doesn't look like anything in here is comfortable, right? It's just all, it's all very like static looking with warm colors and it's kind of odd um but very very much in keeping with uh current the current fashion um 
where you guys are seated is as, you know, as like special guests, there's the runway. And as everybody starts to take their seats, um, you're on one side of the runway. Your whole family is sort of at the front as the creators of the cloak that will be shown off. Um, and on the other side, you can see the prom nights, which is, man, they're just, they're just all so good looking. It's just odd. They're, they're all like the most beautiful people of varying races that you've ever seen. They're all wearing beautiful armor, um, which is their specialty, as you guys would know. Um, and uh, it, it, I think, makes you, aside from Brianica, who, doesn't, who isn't paying attention at all, um, it makes the rest of you a little bit nervous. Maybe not even nervous because you really wanted to win, but nervous because, you know, if you lose, your mom is just going to be the fucking worst. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the, the fashion show begins and we see your guys's cloak. It's, uh, it's a thing, man. <laughs> and everyone applauds. <laughs> they, Yay! it's incredible. Um, the, the like electricity that's dancing off of it. Um, the, the sort of woodwork with the flowers and every now and then one of the flowers will just like poop out a pixie and it's very <laughs> bizarre and everyone's like, my God, how did they do that? Um, it's all somehow it's all come together to look very, just very couture, right? They are, they are delighted. And so many, you can hear whispers all over the place of people who really, really want this cloak. Um, and then uh, the prom night's garb comes out and it's, it's also quite beautiful, but you're a little bit confused because it seems as though someone is wearing invisible armor and in some, in some lights, this is, this man walks out wearing, you know, little, little underoos. And sometimes the light seems to hit something. There's something there, right? There's, there's like, he's definitely wearing a thing, but you can't seem to see it. And everybody around just kind of, yeah, yeah. They they seemed unsure at first, and then they start to applaud more and more. And they start uh, standing up. Yeah, this is oh, it's never been done. Such vision. Oh, this has never, this has never been done. Um. And, you know, it, it roller coasters that way where it goes from there's there's nothing going on to, wow, maybe this is the future of fashion. Maybe this is the future. Just not wearing anything, but also wearing something. Right. And there's whispers. There's there's so much buzz. Um, and. Uh, yeah. How, how do you guys how do you guys feel? Do you guys think do you guys think that they're going to go for yours or do you guys do you guys think that the winner of the fashion show is going to be um, the armor. How are you guys feeling right now? Since uh, Brianica to go up on stage, sands her, her beard bikini and be like, this is what this type of armor will bring. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're asking. You mean, you mean amazing fashion? If that's yes. the case, then they deserve to win, is what yes. I say. You should show them all that. Yes. See, Brianica, so you... and fur furious that her sister continues to mock her outfit, <laughs> gives her, her, her beloved French girlfriend a little smooch and then says, I'll be back, and goes up on stage and walks out and pushes Armor Man out of the way and just, like, rubs up <laughs> all on her bikini outfit. No, and she like, lifts it up for the first time. And underneath... Another beard bikini. Another beard bikini. <laughs> Another a even blonde finer. Blonde. Yeah, a blonde beard bikini. Even a finer, a, just an even finer type of bikini. And then baby she takes hair. the other. Yeah, and she wraps it around her it's head. It's like a string bikini of, of blonde baby hair. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's from even the, from more. From the beautiful. nape of her neck. Like special, special hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's her, it's top head. It's top head? It's her head hair. That forms this other bikini, and her beard was the was the on top oh, layer. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you've uh you've upset the whole pacing of this entire <laughs> thing, 
and you know the the sort of the sort of like concerned into yeah of course yes i get it that happened with uh the armor from the prom nights has now uh started to turn into concern like wait is everybody else just going to is it is everyone else going to be naked at this show and they they start to um be a little confused um so i want you to roll with charisma jesse i want you oh to God. roll Has with your charisma. arrogance made us win <laughs> see whether know. or not you um <laughs> someone in my chat said like some of the crowd just leans to someone else and they're like that's Brianica. she's so hot right now <laughs> <laughs> But this naked thing, this is what is going to happen. This naked armor mm-hmm. is going to make this happen to everybody. I don't remember if I have a plus one on this or not. You I do. Can't. I do? Yeah. Let it begin. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. You, man, you go backstage. Nobody else really notices. You um, you go backstage. The, the next person who's going to walk out there is, you know, in some kind of, like, bobbly madness. And you shove them aside. And you strut on stage, walk up with your your beard, with your your beard bikini, and then rip it off to reveal another beard bikini, and you strut. And while everybody is is so charmed, like you you've got ev- everybody's looking, everyone is looking at you, and they are they're into it. They're they're definitely into what they see. But there's also a feeling of wait, maybe what the Armor Knights did wasn't all that spectacular. If this Unique. was the same idea that lots of people had, maybe maybe this naked armor is like kind of a thing that a lot of people thought of and not quite that unique. Yeah. Um, so you, you definitely spun everything in the favor of your family and your mom is mortified, but you know, she'll be delighted. I give a little like point and kiss to my beautiful, beautiful <laughs> question mark, French girlfriend <laughs> down the front <laughs> <My chérie. laughs> oh, like, oh. <laughs> start to see everyone like audibly like processing this in their brain. Like I just stand up and like clapping like that's yes exact <laughs> keep that going but like wow. Brianna kind of like takes it as like my sister's finally proud and i'm just like yep. you did what you wanted you did what you were here to do oh i <laughs> give you like a sa- the sass walk is just next level at this point i see you give you like a little butt like at the end oh huh? this is there's a death drop at the end for sure oh yeah death drop yeah the splits yeah <laughs> yeah just like bam, bam. <laughs> yeah like lip Absolutely. sync for your life. That's the end. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> While all this is happening, Knox is just eating what's left over of the stew that she still had with her on the side. She's lines. become just, like, she's become addicted to body, <laughs> human yeah. flesh. Yeah. She has the shakes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, somewhere, somewhere in the crowd, you you hear a person's voice go, "Ooh, yeah." <laughs> and uh, your mom, your mom sits up very straight, and she stands up and looks around, almost kind of hopeful. Um, but but she doesn't seem to see anybody, and and she sits back down and um, just kind of nods to herself. And yes, we're very proud. We're very proud, Briannica. We're very proud of you, Briannica. Keeps looking around. She seems um, a little bit distracted by something that she heard. And honestly, the rest of you recognize that voice um but you're not allowed to talk about it so uh you've been you've been told multiple times by your mother that that person does not exist so oh, no. you're, not, you're not you're not allowed to bring it up with her Papa? but you all, you all know you all know that um that was that was the voice of your fifth sibling who left your family to join oh, no. the uh feast or famine guild who has rebranded himself to ultimate best, but he showed up, he showed up to see whether or not you guys managed to uh, win this whole thing. And he left convinced just from, just from hearing him in the crowd, you know, that he was, he was proud of you and Briannica, you definitely heard it and, and felt the love. You felt the brotherly love, even though you weren't able to, to see him really. Um, so yeah, I, it's a, it's a landslide. Man, like with Briannica, just making sure that everybody had eyes on her. 
um, sort of upsetting this whole reveal that the prom nights had um, by far, by far the most unique item of everything at the fashion show was your cape. And your mother is delighted and so proud of you. I can't believe my babies, my babies. They did so well. They make me so proud. You know, when when one of you guys is supposed to go up and accept it, she like goes up instead. Cause oh, no. <laughs> you know, she just feels like like she has to. It just, oh my gosh, I'm just so proud of my children. They're so wonderful. They're all so talented. And I'm just, I'm just delighted to I'm just so delighted that you all finally see them for who they really are. The talented, wonderful babies that I could not be more proud of if I tried. <laughs> um yeah, and you guys take home. You guys take home the uh, the the award, the award for having the finest cloak, the finest piece of uh, wardrobe material, if you could call it that, at the fashion show. So we didn't get any money to move out of our mom's house. <laughs> you don't get any money. No. This is, all, this is nope. This is all yeah. about whose Prestige. guild is best. Um, yeah, unfortunately, in her mom's house. unfortunately, unlike uh, unlike guilds like the Food Guild, um, there are lots of guilds that are constantly in the fashion industry of your area. There are lots of guilds that are constantly at war with one another, and so they put on lots of uh, they put on events to sort of uh, make each other feel stupid. <laughs> so. That was, uh, that's what you got roped into. And, um, yeah, although this was between mostly you and the prom nights, uh, there are maybe four or five other guilds that participated and really just absolutely dropped the ball. Um, so yeah. Hugo, did you get your tattoo changed? No. No? <laughs> no. It never ends. <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> the battle rages on forever. The battle rages on forever, yeah. Absolutely. In here. In here. In, that's that's the whole point. Mm, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hugo, who Hugo, his his way of fashion, he believes that clothes have to feel soft and amazing, and the mm -hmm. dragon feels the opposite. They'll never see eye to eye. <laughs> the dragon. Sure, the dragon. The dragon like, always wears leather. It's so weird. Yeah. Why would he want to wear leather? It's mm -hmm. odd. Yeah, he mm -hmm. was like a fucking gang leather jacket studded one. Mm -hmm. mm. So um with the with the prestige that you've earned in in the um the fashion world, uh what what project do you think that you would wind up going on? Like what what would be your next big project that you would wind up doing in this world? Individually? Mm-hmm. Hugo would do uh, nightwear. <laughs> silky Rose, pajamas nice just jammies that. silky <laughs> jammies I like it it's his dream mm -hmm. <laughs> um showed do you feel like you were turned do you feel like you were turned to the ways of of making clothes a little bit more or do you feel now more than ever like you want nothing to do with fashion overall uh I feel like I still want nothing to do with it but we've we've uh created this relationship now with our pixie prince so he's kind of the the steady influence that's you know i would show up in armor and he'd say something like we can we can make this better like let me just let me just add some things to it right so whatever i'm wearing it's always almost because this pixie guy has has completely changed whatever i'm wearing but i could not be fussed to like <laughs> consider this and instead uh, I would see the opportunity to like go on adventures and get all of these crazy exotic materials and mm -hmm. then barter them for other things so I would I would take this like notoriety and be like oh you need this mystical rabbit fur and that's what I'm gonna go out and do and get the fur like go barter with the pixies to get some of their pixie flowers or whatever and barter and trade all these like gotcha. unique herbs and flowers and animal bits Makes except sense. for Grumpus. I don't deal with that. 
<laughs> never go back. I'll never go back. I feel to like speak. none of y'all want to deal with a grumpus ever <laughs> again. I can't risk being mean. <laughs> Briannica, what's your what's your future hold? What do you feel inspired to do? Uh, well, um, my my love and I have uh gotten married, and we live together in Mont de Usson, which is a uh, it's the French, France of the French. It's the French of this world. <laughs> right, um, yeah, sure. And that's where we moved to. And we make designer handbags out of body hair. Very right. stylish. Very nice. <laughs> affordable for everyone. And yeah, in fact, yeah. you can use your own. We, we, we teach seminars on how to use your own body hair to make your own bags. We're Does very she, good. like, she, like uses her like locks of armpit hair and you use your oh beard. we are oh we shave everything we are see and we're now totally hairless we live a hairless lifestyle and uh we oh it's beautiful and we create handbags and we uh we're very well known in the industry we are some may consider us to be the finest example of a power couple in this industry mm. you got two it. big old cue balls for heads she makes me, she, when I get home, she's cooked me dinner every day. I don't know what it is. It tastes a little weird, but it's always <laughs> delicious. And Knox, did you ever move out? Oh, what yeah. No, doing? She just like immediately probably moved out. And then um, I'm thinking started a, a fashion franchise with the Peacock, mm. considering the Peacock was just so edgy. <laughs> so her and the Peacock just being oh, so yeah. edgy together. It's a match made in to, heaven. Yeah, are just going to open their own shop with a line of all black edgy clothing. Like a, a goth boutique. Yeah, a goth boutique like pe 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 goth. Pe goth. <laughs> 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 yeah, and so her and this peacock went into this business together. Now the peacock, you know, has a bunch of tattoos and like brass knuckles on its little claws and has a mohawk. I love and that's it. a yeah. They opened up their own fashion line and. Never uh, spoke to their mother again. <laughs> she suggested. cried every day. Knox Whatever. topic. <laughs> Knox topic, yes. Knox topic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the finest of Pegoth clothing at Knox topic. Oh my God, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for being part of my silly uh, fashion fantasy one shot. Um. I love you all. You're wonderful. And you're all so goofy and it made my life great. Um, yeah, we're going to go one at a time and tell you who we are and where you can find us and what we do. So, Jesse, would you like to go first? Sure. I would love to. Hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's my information on the screen right now. <laughs> Just two words. Puckish Rogue. Nail Nail it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you can see more shenanigans on uh, twitch.tv slash shaboozy or on youtube.com slash jessicox or you can follow me on the tweetster at uh, jessicox or I would suggest on Instagram at notoriouscox where it really goes down, really goes down. Uh, and yeah, and that's it. That's it. That's, that's, you know, I will always come around to ruin other people's role plays. It is my, it is my pleasure to do so. Mm. Great. Uh, Holly? All right. Hello. Uh, I am Holly Conrad on Twitter and Commander Holly everywhere else. Uh, on YouTube is Commander Holly. And um, if you guys like watching me role play characters that are gross and weird disasters, I stream every Tuesday on uh, twitch.tv slash D&D or Commander Holly Twitch as well. And uh, it's from four to six, and it's fun. I'm just playing regular D and D, and it's crazy, and you should in, and it's nuts. But I will also always show up and ruin everyone's role play with my <laughs> weird characters who like to kill things and eat people. So, hooray! Why do all my so friends like this? <laughs> Sam, would you like to tell everybody about yourself? Uh, hi, guys. I'm Sam. You can find me at twitter.com slash strippin and twitch.tv forward slash strippin. Uh, I normally stream at noon PST every day. I just I play video games. That's about it. Perfect. And I also ruin everyone's role plays when I. <laughs> this is why. I realize why. This is why all my friends do this. We were just drawn <laughs> to each other for similarities. Yeah, yeah it's true. Um, and Aaron, Aurelian. Hi, I am Aurelian. You can find me everywhere Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, 
Twitch, YouTube, everything at Aurelian. Um, I usually just help out behind the scenes with role play stuff. So it was fun to be able to jump in a show um, and be able to help. Thank you, Dodger, for DMing and being amazing as always. Uh, I don't think anybody ruined it. I think this would not be <laughs> amazing, hot, not disaster that it was if everyone hadn't come. So good job, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll see you guys. Yay. Yay! Um, and I'm Dodger. Uh, this was my second time ever DMing. So thank you guys so much for watching and to uh, my my lovely friends for being part of the game. Um, if you enjoyed this and you would like to see uh, the first one that I ever did, it's also on JP's YouTube. It was called Feast or Famine. It had a different group of lovely people. So I would love it if you would watch that as well. And uh, yeah, I stream at twitch.tv slash dexbonus um, doing gaming and anime stuff. And I'm also on YouTube at Press Heart to Continue. And I would love to DM again because it's super duper fun, especially when it's with friends. Um, it's just such a blast. So thank you all so much for watching. And uh, yeah, have a have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic day, everybody. We will see you next time. Um, I believe that Roleplay Dikea is going to be happening on Monday. <laughs> Three of us what? are in that. Um, so, uh, we'll see you for that, and otherwise... That's gonna be, that is the lava tube. <laughs> yeah, that's the lava tube. That's the lava tube. That's the lava tube. We'll we see y'all for the lava tube on Monday. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.